Hey guys, welcome back. Patrick here. Today we're going to be taking a look at integrating Blender into our WebGL workflow. Uh, specifically, bringing a scene in using the Colada loader to load said scene. Alright, so first thing we're going to need to do is actually take a look at the WebGL the environment that I've kind of created to demo this workflow. Alright, so first thing you'll see, we have our Suzanne head. Uh, plus our, our, our plane at the bottom. Um, and in that scene, I'm going to bring up the console and demo what's going on here. All right, so you'll see in the scene, we have a child, the, in the scene we have a child or an array in here that has a spotlight and a perspective camera um, along with, whoops, did not mean to expand that, uh, a group right here. Okay, so essentially that group is the loader the spotlight is spotlight we added and the perspective camera is, a, is per perspective camera that's been added to the scene. <laughs> okay, now if I come up and open up Blender, you'll see that I have a Suzanne head and a plane, just like in over here. Okay, and that's being loaded up uh, using the Collada loader. Alright, so we can expand that and we can take a look at those two objects. We have the Suzanne head and the plane right there. They're both object 3Ds. There's your Suzanne. And you can see that's labeled over here, Suzanne. And then you have your plane. And that's labeled right there. Okay. All right, so, this, so those are the two components. And they're all just part of an array that are grouped together. Okay, so what does this mean? This means that editing these things is a little bit more tricky. Uh, because it's a group under a, an array, <laughs> you have to do things a little bit differently. Uh, you basically have to traverse your scenes to make changes. And we looked at traverse uh, a little bit earlier, but basically what traverse does, if you look at it, is that it looks for this children right here, and it goes through it. So that's specifically exactly what it's looking for, is that keyword children. And you can see children keeps going down there. So children, children, children. So you might have to actually traverse things multiple times um, recursively in order to get to whatever you're trying to cha change. And we'll look at that in a little bit. All right. Next thing you'll notice is that you, we first we have this specular value right in here. And then we have these darker values right in here. Uh, it's a little more of a flat shader. And you also notice that this is pivoting or spinning um, on, from the middle point, and this is spinning at an angle. All right, what's going on with that? Let's look at our Blender scene and figure out what's going on. All right, first thing, we have material one. That's the red one. All right, and it's got a diffuse value of red, and the shading on it is either flat or smooth. Okay, and you can see with the flat shading, you get kind of those faceted pieces right there, whereas the smooth shading... It's going to smooth everything out. Now also what this flat shade versus smooth is going to do is it's going to give you the, the it's going to change the specularity on your WebGL model. So if I brought that up real quick, you'll see this has the smooth shading applied to it, whereas this has, the, or I'm sorry, this has the flat shading, whereas this has that smooth shader applied to it. <laughs> and that's going to make tremendous amounts of differences as to how your scene is, looks. All right, next up we have the global coordinates, which is moving this object around and placing it, as well as the local coordinates of it. So if we take a look at the local values of it, you can see that that's been rotated locally, 31 degrees, and that's how it's determining where it's going to spin about from in our scene. So that value in there, that rotational value, is dictating when we spin this at what angle it's going to rotate. So um, I would suggest looking up a little bit more about global versus local. If this doesn't make sense to you, uh, you can change the local value of it, of the rotation of the object, uh, to have it point up, and that'll change how this is going to spin about. Uh, so it's kind of an important thing to know and understand. 
All right, so moving forward, in order to get this scene the way that we have it, and you'll notice that I've also deleted the camera and some of the other lights and stuff that are basic in the default Blender scene. Um, so I'm only really loading up those two objects. You're going to come over here to File, Export, Colada, and then bring it into your WAMP directory under WebGL, Models, and you can just export that scene right there. All right, so those are kind of the big changes that you can make in here. Diffuse, your local versus global, smooth and flat shaders. You can bring lights in as well. Uh, they act, they port in differently. I noticed the hemisphere light points it ports in as an ambient light. Um, I would not recommend that workflow. I would recommend just making your lights in, using what's already available to you in 3.js, uh, and then just kind of assigning your positional values and stuff like we have been using these variables. I think that's kind of the better workflow for it uh, as opposed to trying to bring in lights from Blender. I think it's better just to bring in your geometries from Blender uh, as well as your textures and we'll go over textures and uh, baking textures onto it uh, in another tutorial uh, but that's another useful trick and technique that, that we can take a look at. All right, so let's go into the actual code, take a look, see how that works. All right, so here's our loader right here, new three loader. Then we have our options. If you remember, uh, when we discussed the axes in Blender versus the axes in 3.js, uh, Z is coming towards you, okay? So what we need to do is convert the up axis to true. Otherwise, we're going to be looking at a Blender file with our up axis. As you can see, Z is going up. So that's going to be all thrown off. So that's why we need to set that to true. All right, so then we have the loader loading the file. There's our monkey file. We're loading it locally. You could load it um, from a server or we'll do whatever you want. Uh, the one I'm going to be when I post this file you're gonna be able to see that I'm loading it directly from my github alright next we're scaling the scene scene comes in really 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 small so we're gonna to need to scale it up so it fits more I scaled it up by uh, three alright next we're gonna to have to traverse said scene okay so there's our um, day file and basically what we're doing is putting that into an array right there and then we're going to traverse that array for all of its children and the children are the first level of children are just going to be the meshes that we're looking at so that's the plane in this one but then what we're going to need to do is traverse that mesh again and when we traverse it again we're going to need to turn on the cast shadow and we're going to need to turn on the receive shadow all right um, so if you remember correctly uh, the cast shadow and the receive shadow are turned off by default and we're going to need them on if we want to see the see those things alright another thing that we have to do is if you want you can traverse it, it again and take a look at the material and set it to needs update remember how we have to use the needs update in in case we want to change the uh, lighting parameters uh, the materials need to be updated. However, this shouldn't really be called here. Uh, in fact, I should probably remove this. And if we want to do this, we're going to actually have to put this little piece of code in here all the way down into our render. Because uh, that's something that turns on basically once and then automatically turns off. Uh, it's pretty intensive when you do that. So I would recommend just keeping this off for now and setting everything in initially and not changing around lights and stuff in the animation otherwise you're gonna get really bogged down uh, from a graphic perspective alright the other one is going through the same thing in the, as the plane now we don't have to do it this way we could actually do use the instance of command uh, to take a look at uh, all the meshes that we brought in so you could just say if it, you know, child traverse, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I was just demoing that you could do it by Colada ID. 
but also you could do it of as instance of you know three dot mesh um, child equal it is three dot mesh and instance of and it'll do everything in the scene and set all of those values. So you have a couple different options for changing these things around. Okay. So last but not least, we're going to traverse the scene in our animation and take a look at it by the rotational value. And this is how you can set those values as well. So again, every time you need to change or modify anything, you have to traverse the whole scene in order to do so. All right, so that's pretty much it. I hope this gets you guys thinking on how you can do it. Next, we'll take a look at textures and how those can be incorporated into our file. Uh, I'll get a little bit more heavy into Blender uh, and how that, how that can be used. I uh, hope you found this helpful, and thank you again for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>